This is kind of a continuation for the previous video where I talked about using mixing station with only my phone to control my Magis Enter 2C digital mixer. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom layouts to make your workflow more efficient and quicker. I'm not going to go through all the possibilities because every parameter that you can imagine, you can probably put on a knob or slider or fader or whatever and keep it in front of you. So I'm going to show you what makes sense to me, what I think is really useful and helpful. And also you should know that everything that you can already do on the console, you can do on the free version of Mixing Station. You can even do more on the free version. There are IDCAs, you can customize the layers, you can do a lot of stuff on the free version without paying anything for it. However, some of the features that are really useful, like grabbing a certain parameter, like a frequency of a band of EQ of a certain channel and putting it in front of you all the time, or linking the preamp gain of channels, or linking the EQ of multiple channels at the same time, things like these, and also creating custom layouts, these are only in the paid version of the app. However, if you want to try it, you can. On PC and on iPhone, you can try the Pro features for free for as long as you want. The only catch is that every 15 minutes, the app will disconnect and you'll have to reconnect it manually to the mixer. However, on Android, you can keep it connected for as long as you want, but you cannot try the Pro features. Something I wish I could do is make a custom layout for only one layer, but that's not possible, unfortunately, maybe. It will be possible in future update. I don't know. I really wish that. But as of now, a layout is something that's always on the screen all the time. So these buttons right here, the layers buttons, and these ones are part of the layout. First thing that I was complaining about in the last video is that in order to go into the signal generator, I would have to go to the three dots and set up and then signal generator and turn it on and move the frequency. That's too many steps, right? Because I also want to go back into the main left, right and tweak the EQ. So the first thing I could do is go to the settings right here to the gear icon and over to the layouts tab. And I'm going to create a new layout from the plus right here. Click on this, delete it. Click on this, delete it, click on this, delete it. First of all, I want the EQ of the main left, right? So I'm going to click on the plus and go to channel, then hit channel view. And I'll get this overview of any channel and I'll put it right here and make it nice and big. Then something else I want to do is that I want to be able to turn on and off the oscillator, the signal generator without going through all these steps. So I'm going to create a button plus general button and I'm gonna put that button right here click on it settings right here you have many options you can either click or long click I will add an action to the click and go here press on current channel select console and go to the signal generator click on it and that's it go back now this button will turn on and off the signal generator but I still need to control the frequency of that signal generator so I'm going to click on the plus again, general, create a slider. And I'm going to put that slider right here. And make it bigger. And I'm going to click on it. Settings, add action, current channel, go to console, and then signal generator. And the only option is to control the frequency. I'm also going to put the main fader right here. And I'll tell you why. So I'm going to click plus. In the presets, you have bus master channel. That's the main left, right. And I'll put it right here. Although I don't necessarily need it, but I need to have it in order to select the main left, right to make sure that I'm on that channel right here. So that's it for the first layout. I can go to the settings right here and change the name of it. Speaker tuning. And the behavior, I will set it to override mixer layout. So that's the main layout that the app gets into. Apply and go back. And that's it. If you open another layout like this and open, you don't have the options right here. You can't go into the effects or into the settings or stuff like that. You have to go out of the layout. So that override mixer layout is saying that this layout is the main one for the app. Okay, so now if I want to generate a sine wave, I could... Turn this button on and move this slider around to change the frequency. And right here, I have the EQ of whatever channel is selected. If I have the main left right selected, that's it. If I'm using matrices, I could send the main left right to the matrices directly from here. Or I can go through the arrows 
and go to the matrices. So if I don't want to EQ the main left right directly for the speakers, I can reset the EQ like this and I can send it to matrix one and matrix two. And then I could go with the arrows to matrix one and two and I could EQ them like this. The signal generator is on, change the frequency, find the bad frequency. Okay, that's it. Let's remove it like that. It's really quick. You have the EQ and the signal generator and the frequency with you. Now this frequency is this one, the first frequency, that one. You can't control the other and you can't make a button to switch between sign and pink noise. These things you'll have to go into the signal generator tab to choose. Also the destination, the same thing. Also the level of the signal generator, you can't make a knob for that, unfortunately. So I wish that I could have this on one layer and the rest is normal, but this is better than nothing. It's still really good. Also keep in mind, I'm using a mixing station on my phone. So that's why I need things to be big because the phone screen is small. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go to the settings again make a new layout. When you turn off the mixer and back on, the talkback will always get turned off. And it's really annoying to go like this and set up talkback and turn it on. So I want to make a button to turn on and off the talkback for A and for B. And I want to also be able to control the level of the talkback for A and the level of the talkback for B. So hit the plus, go to general, button, and I'm gonna put the button right here click on it, settings, and click add action, current channel, no, console, yes, and talk back. Talk back A, go back, and I can call it right here, talk A. I'm gonna create a second button for talk back B. You can right click on it, or normal click, and hit duplicate and paste, so this is the same button right now, but I'll make it different. I'll click on it, go to the settings, call it talk B, and click on this right here and choose B instead. So right now this button turns on the talkback B. I still need knobs to control the level of these talkbacks. So I'm gonna click on the plus, go to general, create knob, put it right here, click on it, settings, and add action and go here, console, talk back. And this, the only option for the knob is to control the level. So this is gonna control level of talk back A, talk A, I'm gonna click on it, duplicate, paste, put it right here, click on it, settings, call it talk B, and click on the action and choose B. So this is now a button to turn on and off talk back A, this is turn on and off talk back B. This is to change the level of talk A, this is change the level of talk B. That's great. You don't need to go into the settings and the menus anymore to find the talk back. Something else that is really useful is when I did the first session of the conference, I told you that I recorded the first session and then I played it back through the mixer to do a virtual sound check quickly between the sessions. So instead of going to the routing each time and switching the routing, you can create a button for that. So I'm gonna hit the plus button, general, create a button and put it right here, click on it, settings. And now instead of the click, I will use the long click because if I accidentally press on it, I don't want the routing to change in the console. So I want to make sure that it's intentional. So I'm going to choose long click. That's the behavior of the button and add action and then go to current channel here, console and routing. Click on routing. It says playback and recording. I'll show you what these are in a moment. First one will be playback and I'm gonna click on it, duplicate, paste, and this will be recording. So I'm gonna click settings, call it recording and click on the action right here and choose recording. And let's make this layout the main layout of the app. So I'm gonna click on the settings and go to behavior, override mixer layout, apply, and then go back. We have this right now, we have the layers and we have talk A, talk B, they can be on at the same time. And you have the level of the talkback and you have recording and playback. Now, if you see, if I click on it, it doesn't change. I have to click and hold until it changes. And these are changing the settings of the routing of the inputs right here. So that's record and that's play. Record, you would want to record your preamps. 
which in my case, I'm using the M32C with the DL32 stage box. So I would have AS5128, AS50A, 9 to 16, AS50A, 1724, and AS50A, 25 to 32. These are my inputs. And if I want to play back the recordings from my computer, it will be card 1 to 8, card 9 to 16, card 1724, and card 25 to 32. This button that I just made is changing between these. So as if I'm going into the routing and changing this. You can see right here on recording, I have my normal inputs that are AS50, A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. If I hit playback, they change to card automatically. They changed all to card. Hit recording again, they changed to the physical input. So I think that's a really useful feature. Instead of going into the routing and changing manually every single time, you can just have these exist all the time and it's great. And what can we do more? We can add a mute group button. So instead of going into the mute groups on the top, you can have a button right here. And if you click on it and go to the settings, and click here, you can change which mute group the button is controlling. So if I go back, the mute groups will be up here. So you'd have to click here and then click on the mute group. But you can have it here, ready for you to go. You can do things like creating a fader to change icons, which is really funny in my opinion. I'll put it right here. Click on it, settings, add action, and icon right here. This is the first option. So if I go back, select a channel and move this fader, you can see it's changing the icon of channel three. If I go to a different channel, it will change the icon of that different channel. That's really funny. I'll put the channel overview again so that you can see what's happening. So I'm going to do this and put a channel view right here. Let me put the fader up here so it's less crowded. And now I'm going to make the fader control something else. Delay. You can make it control the input delay of the channel. You can make it control the parameters of the compressor, for example. So I can put it to ratio and go back. If I move this fader, it's changing the ratio of the compressor. You can control also other parameters, the release, the sidechain, the threshold. You can control EQ, a certain band of EQ. It could be the frequency or it could be the gain or the Q of the band. So let's say you have the frequency of band number one and select this channel. I'll turn it up so that you can see it. Move this fader. That's moving the frequency of this band. If this is a low cut, for example, that could be useful for something. Maybe you could do that for the effect returns. So let's say you have effect return right here and this band is a high cut. Now it's only controlling the first band. So I'm going to go right here and edit, click on it and make it control current band. So whatever band is selected, it will control it. It's controlling that selected band. And you don't need to have a fader. It can be a knob or slider. And do the same for the gate, the same for the preamp gain, same for the sends, the main fader of the channel, or the send to the monobus, or the panning, or the send to the buses, or the pan to the buses. There's really a lot that you can do. You can also decide if it's current channel or current layer or the bus master, which is the main left right, or things that are related to the app, or things that are related to the console, like the audio player, effects, you can control certain parameters, like the size of the reverb, for example, can be on that fader, the head amps. So that fader could be the gain of a certain preamp. It could control the monitor section, the level of your monitor. It could control the signal generator, as I showed you. It could control the level of the talkback and MIDI stuff that I never use. You can do a lot. The limit is your imagination. So I hope this was helpful. For more mixing station tutorials, click on the playlist on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.